Hello, welcome to Mental Health. Today is going to be a pretty um, eventful day in mental health. Uh, I'm here with Esther Gold, uh, the mother of David Gold, who was in Woods of Ypres, all this stuff behind me, other than Megadeth. But yeah, um, I absolutely love this band. Uh, it was a big part of my life, and um, well, I'll just talk about it a bit right now. Um, uh, David Gold was the man behind the band Woods of Ypres, and uh, they started out more as a black metal band with doom metal influences, and ended off more of a doom metal band with black metal influences. Every album was slightly different, and the sound progressed. Um, it's one of my favorite bands. I, I absolutely love this, and um, it's sad that we I can't be talking to David, but um, it, bad things happen just like good ones, I guess. Um, yeah, so um, Woods uh, was uh, one of my all-time favorite bands, as I said. Um, I even named a cat after Woods of <laughs> Ypres. I just called the cat Woods, but yeah. And um, the, the music was great, but the thing I loved most about it was the lyrics. Um, David really knew how to write those lyrics. Um, they helped me in a really hard part of my, part of my life um like um especially with my getting out of drug addiction and stuff because um especially with this song here um i'll just uh read some of the lyrics for you i, I know i don't need to read it for you esther but um yeah but um here we go what good are memories with no one to stand beside you what good are memories when those you made them with despise you we stood in the sand we stared at the stars what good is any of it now these were the moments in our lives that invoked the years of silence. Oh, yeah. Um, say hello, uh, Esther. Hi. I'm very excited to be part of this. And uh, I'm thanking everyone who continues to honor our David. I call him our David. I, I like to think that all of the listeners and those who miss him and love him are now his brothers and sisters. And as you know, I, I have the wonderful name now if, as Mama Gold. And uh, thank you very, very much for all of you who connect with me. And I want to think that, yeah, you are David's brothers and sisters. Oh, well, thanks. That means a lot. Um, uh, I was lucky enough to meet him once. A lot of people uh, don't get that chance. They, they hear about the band afterwards. But um, uh what what was it like um, when uh, David first started listening to metal? What was your first reactions? Well, you know, uh, David listened to a lot of music. And he did say to me at one point, he said, uh, Mom, I'm, I'm very courageous to write about and, and sing about so many things that some people think about or they feel um, maybe fearful to share things sometimes ashamed um and when I, I think about there's that me too movement out there i i think with many artists they'll have lyrics that someone that's listening to it will go yeah me too i was thinking that or feeling that or i experienced it so um i, I think from i always call david david the poet and his lyrics are quite powerful and he also had added that in his music and i used to love it when he go mom <laughs> mom uh my lyrics he said there are many messages in my music and in my lyrics for those who are needing to hear them and i did read something once that said when life is going well we enjoy the music and then sometimes when life isn't the greatest we stop and listen to the lyrics and I, for one, I enjoyed listening to David's lyrics. So when he started to um, be more active in this genre of music, I thought, I think he is reaching out to a very unique audience. And uh, many times, many of us are misunderstood. So what a beautiful way to get a message across is to maybe to some people who aren't feeling like they're being heard so for me, it wouldn't matter what genre of music David was working in or listening to. That was his choice, and I had no problem with it. In fact, I'm not that bad with dark vocals. 
That's great. Um, a lot of parents um, would be like, turn that crap off, you know? And uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm lucky enough that my parents are really supportive and awesome people too, just like yourself. So oh, that's yeah, great. That's um, so David started playing the drums first or how, what, what instrument was he playing first? Cause I, I know he was drums originally. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's an interesting story because um, with all my children, they start at a very young age. You know, you, you want them to experience a little bit of learning about music. So David had, a, you know, a few piano lessons when he was a younger boy. Um, but this is true story. When I was growing David, he uh, heard a lot of music because his grandparents, they were musicians. They played the accordion. And then after David was born, we had a great grandmother live with us for a, a short time. And every day she played the piano. And so David was just an infant and I made sure every day I put his cradle beside the piano. And uh, this grandmother played the most beautiful music. So I'd like to think that David was wired that way from listening to music when he was in utero when I was growing him. And then of course his grandparents playing music to him. So, um, but he stopped being interested in music at a young age and he was really interested in sports. Oh, wow. And he, he was a wonderful basketball player. <laughs> and we even put in a basketball court in our backyard and he and his brother and their friends, they would come every night after they did what they needed to do, homework or chores around the house, they would go out and shoot hoops. And David was playing a high school game and he got injured when he was playing basketball. So of course I had to bring him to a doctor and the examinations were done. And the doctor said um, to David, he was only 16 then, and the doctor said to him, uh, he was recommending that David stop that sport because of his injury. And he feared that David would actually damage his growth plates um, in his legs if he continued with the sport. So um, it was a very quiet drive home. And as I said, David loved sports and he was good. And with anything that he would take on, he just would work and work at it to make sure that he was the best that he could be. So he was quiet for a couple of days. And then one day, yeah, uh, he just came upstairs. I was in the kitchen and he said, if I can't play sports, I'm gonna learn music. And he chose the drums. So uh, ranged that he would go for drum lessons every Monday um, in the evening for an hour. And I would sit at the coffee shop and, and he didn't drive a car at that time. I'd sit at the coffee shop and have my coffee and read or talk to people. And he really enjoyed it. Well, we didn't have a drum set at home. So I knew a friend that had a, a music store and I didn't have a lot of money. And I asked him, could I buy a set of drums, a decent set of drums for David as a surprise? and if I could do payments. And yes, he agreed. So there's kind of a cute story. Uh, David's other siblings, they all came with me to the music store. We got the drums. I have no idea how to set them up, but we set up the drums and had the house all quiet. And uh, David was um, picked up by his dad to come home. And I put a sign on the back door that said, hi, dad and David, uh, the kids and I, we've gone to Aurora's for some pasta. And then after we're going to go to the movies, there are leftovers in the fridge. And I heard David and we're hiding in the dark behind the drums. And I heard David go, Aurora's, because that's the restaurant he likes to go, Aurora's. And he went, oh, movies. Oh leftovers anyway they came in the house and this was even a surprise to the dad because i i didn't include him in this surprise and they came in turned the lights on and of course the other siblings and i went surprise and david had his own set of drums so 
uh, he would practice a lot. We fortunately, we had a storage room underneath our garage and it became David's name of his first band, Concrete Surroundings. Oh, wow, cool. Yes. So there he would be in this cement room under the garage and um, practicing. And of course, when the doors closed, the rest of the house couldn't be hearing his practicing. So um, he would practice in this. He still would take lessons. And then one day, the owner of the uh, music store, he had a friend come from Toronto and he wanted this gentleman to hear David play the drums. So I was excited about this. I didn't know who it was, but excited about this experience. So I sat at the coffee shop thinking he'd be the full hour. And within maybe 20 minutes, David came to the table where I was sitting and he handed me the money back. And I said, oh, did, is there no lesson or did the man not come? He said, mom, the fella said, show me what you have learned drum for me so he said I did and uh, the man said to the owner give this man his money back he knows more about drumming than I do <laughs> isn't wow. that amazing and That's so great. of course David had this grin on and for those that know David well I mean he would practice and practice and just trying to do you know the best and to learn and uh, it, it was quite powerful and like what an exciting thing to have that man say that so david didn't go for any more lessons so yeah so it was drumming and of course he he's a multi-instrumental yeah. he plays the keyboard and the guitar and um i have an old piano upstairs he often would be on that as well so that was i think a bit of tragedy with him being injured and look where it led him. Yeah, how, that's uh, amazing. how exciting, how exciting. Long story short, but I, I had to get that little bit in about um, the surprise about the drums. And I'm forever grateful for the owner of that music store for letting me pay, like every payday, I would go in and to pay for the drums. So I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a real, that's a really good story. Wow. Um, it's it's a good thing and good thing for me anyways that uh david heard heard, heard himself yeah well <laughs> uh i mean it's it's uh who would even imagine that it would it would become as great as you know david did and okay um so david uh spent some time in korea um can you tell us about that like um well what was he doing there well um many People probably know uh, David had uh, three university degrees. Oh, he had, wow. um, yeah, he initially had gone to university for business and and marketing, and he completed that. and um, And then he was in the work world for a while, and he wanted to go to school more. So he did come back to our hometown, and he um, went to our university here in Sault Ste. Marie, and got a degree then. Um, in English and then following that uh, he went um, to um, North Bay to get his Bachelor of Education because he wanted to be a teacher okay. right so um, there were no unfortunately there were no permanent teaching jobs that were available and he said one of his professors made a comment that you know you're all gonna you know come out but bad news there aren't any jobs and uh, David shared with me, he said, well, he said, I will go where there's work. And that's when he started to become an international teacher. And so he went where the work was. And I think <laughs> how courageous of anyone to go to a total different country, different culture, and you're going to become an English teacher. So I think as a mother, which we do we we give our children these wings and and they design their own flight plan and that was his decision he was a young adult and for him to be that brave to go so he was there a short time and and we would do messaging back and forth on the computer and at one 
point he said, I think I made a big mistake. And I said, what's going on? His mom, like everything is so different than Canada. Like, I can't read the signs and just, I can only imagine. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be brave enough to do that. Um, but he was. And the only thing I could say as a mother was, David, you're not the first young man or you won't be the last young man to go to Korea to work or teach. So the only thing I could suggest is try to find some people that have interests like yours. I mean, you're there working and you've signed a you know, contract to be a teacher. So try to find people that have some similar interests. Well, it was most exciting then to get a message that said, Mom, I'm auditioning to be a drummer in a metal band, a Korean metal band. And how exciting that he got to be part of the band Necromyth. And they did an album or a CD, you should say. But uh, he, he um, met some very, very good friends. And um, thank goodness and then his experience there turned out to be quite good. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how the metal community is, is everywhere in the world and you can always find somebody. It's, sure. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. And, and I must tell you, there was quite, quite a, a fun video that David sent to me. So they were all on stage performing and of course, David doesn't speak Korean, but I'm sure the lads were, were teaching him some things. And they were introducing the band. And um, of course, I'm, I'm not understanding anything they're saying, but David sent the video to me. And before I got to see it, he said, Mom, you'll understand a little bit of what they say. So they're speaking to the audience and all excited to perform but introducing and then they point to david on the drums and introducing him then as the whole thing david effing gold <laughs> and like, so, so of course i mean i understood that part yeah. um, and then they performed and uh, it was for me uh it it made me feel happy because uh, he had then joined this band and met these friends and his work was going well. And so those initial weeks then were not that great, but then he learned to become accustomed to what was going on. And Yeah, so, um, so for the people who don't know uh, what happened to David, he, he was coming from um, home for Christmas, correct? Yes. He was in a car accident. Um, yes, I, I spoke to him um, earlier in the morning, and um, I was going to be going to work, and it was before Christmas. And he said, Mom, I probably will be home around 9.30, like 9.30 p.m. So I said, okay, I said, I'll be home. And, and always like with a mom, you're always thinking, okay, when your, your kids are coming home, what food am I going to prepare and, and it was winter time, of course, and um, our weather can be often quite treacherous. Um, so I did, I did get home myself like about maybe about 7 p.m. and thinking, okay, I better get some food ready. David will be home soon. And uh, knock came to the door. And um, we have this fabulous cat. His name was Pantera. <laughs> Dave, Dave, David named the cat his sister Laura had wanted a cat of her own and uh, she chose this big black Bombay cat and David thought the best name would be Pantera so Pantera liked to go outside even in our blizzard cold weather and I had let Pantera out for his little nature experience and uh, in a and I called for him several times and he didn't come to the door. So I was a little bit concerned because where did the cat go? Not came to the door. And standing in the door was a police officer and he had my cat. <laughs> and I, I just said, oh, I said, thank you. I said, you brought my cat home. And, uh, 
And I, I wasn't sure like why he would be there. And he said, could I come in? I said, of course. And we had had on our street um, quite a few break and enters because close to Christmas and that's often when hooligans will do some of the things that they do, which is against the law. So I thought maybe this is like a courtesy call, like telling people to lock up or don't leave things in your car. And he just came right out and said, I'm sorry to inform you, but uh, your son died on Highway 400. And it was a, a transport that had hit him. So we, we had many plans. We had plans. And, uh, and David had a lot of plans, too, after that Christmas, as they had a European tour that was planned. And the bandmates were, as they usually did, they would come to my home before they would head off for a tour. So they all had plane tickets to come. Uh, and then after the European tour, David had um, accepted a job in Dubai, uh, being an English teacher there. And when you talk about his plans for music, uh, he was hoping to do a solo album and his music was totally different because it sounded almost like lullabies um, and they were love songs and after his death his uh, sister Laura found um, a notebook because David was always writing lyrics mm -hmm. and she found a particular song which of course will never never be created and it had to do about lovebirds Wow. And, yeah. And so he often, when he was home, which was lovely, he'd say, Mom, uh, do, do, you mind, do you mind if I play something on the piano? Of course I wouldn't mind. Or, or Mom, listen to this. And uh, he was influenced by the uh, musician Nick Cave. Okay. And uh, so that music he was creating sounded much like that artist's music. Um, but he wanted to do something again, very different. And um, how sad it is. Yeah, that how is sad. sad. Um, with with my parents, um, anytime I'm telling them about my art, it's not music. It's just really dirty jokes sometimes. So I bet <laughs> they wish that uh, I did play music just for that. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Oh. Um, uh, so... Uh, anyone who doesn't know, um, like David uh, got signed to Earache Records just before the last album. He finished the album and then this happened. Um, so he didn't even get to really experience the how popular and how, how magnificent the reaction to this album was. Um, like, mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy it. Um, my favorite song off that one is uh, uh, Modern Life Architecture. I think that's the name yeah um it really just it really talks to me um not like schizophrenia wise because i do have schizophrenia but like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no yeah. uh well again again this very powerful um lyrics um finality has been one that um after david's death many people worldwide and and um i shared on facebook before um David, the news of David's death, it, it did make a, a shockwave around the world because uh, his music was a universal message for people, didn't matter where you lived. And um, that shockwave, and I to this day, which is good for me, it, it, it comforts my heart, is that people um, are sending me all kinds of emails and telling me how David's music has um, influenced them and motivated them and brought them from maybe a dark place to see some bright light. And so that shockwave, those ripples keep on coming my way. And um, I will tell people how much I appreciate the fact that they share things with me. And, and I'll say, you know, you all have your own mom. And people have said that they thought I was a pretty good mom. Um, so if you need to share some excitement, some joy, some success, like I, I listen well, even though I'm talking a lot right now, but also sometimes you just need to be heard. 
And I, I feel honored and humbled many times when some people have, have shared something with me. Um, at one of the tribute concerts, I did get to say something to the audience. And uh, when I got off the stage, there was a row of, of young men and women that want to say something to me. And I had such a variety of requests. And one that touched my heart was two adult young men. And they said, you know, not that we have girlfriends are going to be getting married or anything, but our mom had passed away. And when we get married, would you sit where our mom would sit? Oh, wow. And I I said, of course I would. I mean, that has not happened. Um, and some others gave me some pretty powerful, like mini stories um, about them missing a mom. And uh, yeah, so I became, I became mama gold for many. Well, that's, that's great that you can fill those shoes when, when you need to. Well, There's a lot of people that need a good mom like that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have all the right answers, but I do. And, and I'm always very happy when some will say, uh, do you have time to listen? I just, I just created this. Can I send this to you? What do you think? Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I think it's great. Or even the artists, the artists that have drawn pictures of David, like amazing, amazing likenesses and uh, they'll share these with me and i just think like thank you thank you thank you for me because that way it's like david is remembered and i'm doing my best to make sure he's um unforgettable well i can tell you um like his legacy is not gonna die anytime soon it's gonna last a very long time uh nothing but support from the metal community uh for the woods of Ypres. um yeah. I uh, just, just want to thank you. Um, well, I thank you for giving me your time. And um, like, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Um, David, he's, he's, he's always going to be the light. You know, you were the light. He is the, he is the light. He is my sunshine. And I want everyone to be his walking monument. And see my kitty here. <laughs> um, if, if everyone can be his walking monument and, and carry his brilliant torch, I always say, of, of hope and love, then David will carry on through all of you. And um, thank you so much for asking me to be part of your interviews. Well, thank you for saying yes. Uh, all right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just happy I could talk to you. Um, uh, thank you for being on Metal Health. I'm glad that you invited me and that I could honor my son, David. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye.